Hey everyone, Steve here again, continuing from my last video where I installed macOS Mojave onto my Gigabyte Bricks Pro BXI7-5775. Since I've owned this machine, there has been a consistent issue with the PC whether it was running macOS or Windows. That issue is the noise generated by the internal fan whenever a heavy workload is placed on the processor. I've grown tired of listening to it, and thanks to some comments, I attempted a fix by replacing the thermal paste on the processor with liquid metal. I'll be showing my process and how the PC performs after the fix. Before beginning, I want to state that this is not a tutorial. I basically watched a few videos between Linus Tech Tips and Gamers Nexus to figure out the best approach. How you may approach this compared to me may be very different, and I welcome feedback in the comments so that everyone and myself included, can learn something new. With that out of the way, I'll start with the supplies I used. First are the tools I used. A Phillips screwdriver, preferably with the tip size PH1, some tweezers, a pick, and a spudger. Second are generic store brand cotton swabs. Third is isopropyl alcohol. The solution I had at the time was 99%, but I believe you can use a lower volume solution to get the job done as well. Fourth is silicone conformal coating spray in clear form. This spray will act as a second line of defense in case the liquid metal seeps off the processor dies. I know that clear nail polish can also be used for this purpose as well, but I couldn't find a brand that fit the criteria as described by Gamers Nexus. Fifth is Captain Tape. This is the first line of defense to protect the other components on the processor PCB. It may be overkill to have two forms of protection, but I want to ensure that the liquid metal doesn't destroy the processor. Finally, the liquid metal itself from Thermal Grizzly. Nothing special about it, but I went with what users were placing on their own PC builds. Now you know what I used, so let's get to the teardown. I began by unplugging the bricks and removing the bottom of the PC held by four screws. Safely removing the SSD from the bottom plate, on the board there are two screws holding the motherboard to the rest of the case. I removed them as well as the antenna cables to the wireless card. Next, I push the plastic I.O. shield away from the board to help get it out. If anyone is recreating this never took the board out before, you'll have to break two plastic tabs that hold the plastic I.O. shield to the metal frame or else you'll never get the board out of the casing. I gently pulled on the board until it was out of the case. With the board fan side up, I grabbed tweezers and unplugged the connectors to the CMOS battery and the fan. The fan was held onto the heatsink by two screws and some sort of adhesive rubber. To get the rubber, I used a pick to get in between the rubber and the adhesive. A spudger would also work for this. With the fan removed, the heat sink remained and that was held on by four screws. With the heat sink taken out, we have an exposed processor. To get the area ready, I initially cleaned off the processor dies with dry cotton swabs to get the large amounts of paste. I soaked some cotton swabs with isopropyl alcohol to get the leftover paste in between the small components. When I finished cleaning the processor dies, I also cleaned the bottom of the heatsink with dry and wet cotton swabs. Up next was the conformal coating spray. As a warning to anyone that would want to use this spray, make sure you spray it in a well ventilated room or outdoors because the fumes are not safe to breathe in. I sprayed a cotton swab with the coating to control how much I used. 
I shook off excess onto a paper towel so the swab wouldn't be dripping everywhere. As I applied the substance to the PCB, I just wanted to cover the components in any metal pad that wasn't the processor dies. I applied three coats on the same areas and let each coat dry for about an hour. I applied the captain tape next after the conformal coating was dry. I applied the tape onto the same areas where I applied the coating. I had to cut up the tape for it to fit on certain areas of the PCB. In retrospect, I would have purchased quarter inch tape over half inch tape, but I made it work. To smooth out some areas, I rubbed my tweezers and spudger gently to even out some areas of the tape. To cover most of the components and pads with my cut up tape, I had to apply between two to three layers in some areas. With the last of the tape applied to the PCB, it was time for the liquid metal. Tearing apart the packaging, I took one of the alcohol wipes that came with the applicator and cleaned the processor dies again to make sure there was nothing on them as well as the heatsink. To apply the liquid metal, I placed the micro tip onto the applicator and made a small bead of the substance onto a paper plate. I then picked up the bead with the applicator tip and transferred it over to the processor die. I made the same size bead for the other die. I took one of the cotton swabs that came with the applicator and moved the substance around each of the dies. I wanted to have it in a way that there was a thin layer covering the entire surface of the die without too much forming on any area. I had to play around with this for a few minutes using multiple cotton swabs and the suction portion of the applicator to avoid big pools of liquid metal. When I was satisfied with the coating on each die, I took the cotton swabs that had excess liquid metal on them and rubbed them onto an area of the heat sink where it would be contacting the dies. Now that the processor has some liquid metal, I reassembled the bricks back into working order. With the bricks put back together, I plugged it back in and started it up. It booted back into macOS without any hiccups, but I didn't notice any change in the startup noise. Not that there was one before the liquid metal. From here, I wanted to see if there was any difference in temperature and fan noise compared to how the bricks was previously set up. I apologize for the lack of detail, but due to time constraints, I used the hardware monitor app that I installed in my last video to measure temperatures and RPMs during different points in time. For the first group of readings, I collected these when the PC was running for at least 10 minutes and running a low workload, like a browser window. Comparing both readings from when the PC had thermal paste and liquid metal, it's pretty much a wash. Both the fan speed and temperatures were in the same range, and sound was the same as well. For a second group of readings, I performed a stress test by running Handbrake and converted a video that would take at least 5 minutes to render. I collected the readings when 70% of the process was completed. A couple notes to add here. When I ran the test both times, the fan in each scenario adjusted for more speed within a minute of running the process. At the same time, the processor temperature jumped to over 90 degrees Celsius in both scenarios and stayed that way until the video was finished converting. There was not much that either the old thermal paste or the liquid metal could do in this scenario. This just shows that the fan isn't of good quality. The big difference was the fan RPM under a heavy workload. 
When the processor had the old thermal paste, the fan speed stayed between the 5400 to 5700 RPM range to combat the 90 degrees Celsius processor temps, which caused the obnoxious noise. With liquid metal, while the temperature was in the 90s, the RPM stayed within the 3500 to 3800 range, and with that came a reduction in fan noise, but not as much as I imagined. One other note, since the fan RPMs are lower than normal, the motherboard temperature went up to 65 degrees Celsius, 15 degrees over the previous test. This will be something I have to keep an eye on during the PC's lifespan under my ownership. Overall, I'm not disappointed with the end results. I did accomplish a goal of getting the noise down on the bricks and successfully applied liquid metal without damaging the processor. That can come in handy if I ever plan on using this technique on a different PC. If I can make further improvements to get the temperature and noise down, I'd probably investigate a different CPU fan and play around with the hardware monitor app to adjust fan speeds during different workloads. I don't believe I'll make any progress on a fan replacement based on other videos on YouTube, but maybe with enough tinkering in the monitor app, I can get better results. So that'll wrap up this video, and hopefully some can learn from my experience. This is Steve signing off, and thanks for watching.